She'd say amazing things sometimes. Once you're alive, she'd say, you can't ever be dead. Or she'd say, do I look dead? It was a kind of self-hypnosis, partly willpower, partly faith, which is how stories arrive. But back then, it felt like a miracle. My dreams had become a secret meeting place, and in the weeks after she died, I couldn't wait to fall asleep at night. I began going to bed earlier and earlier, sometimes even in bright daylight. My mother, I remembered, finally asked about it at breakfast one morning. Timmy, what's wrong? She said, but all I could do was shrug and say, nothing. I just need sleep, that's all. I didn't dare tell the truth. It was embarrassing, I suppose, but it was also a precious secret, like a magic trick. Or if I tried to explain it or even talked about it, the thrill and mystery would be gone. I didn't want to lose Linda. She was dead. I understood that. After all, I'd seen her body. And yet, even as a nine-year-old, I had begun to practice the magic of stories. Some I just dreamed up. Others I wrote down, the scenes in dialogue. And at night time, I'd slide into sleep knowing that Linda would be there waiting for me. Once, I remember, we went ice skating late at night, tracing loops and circles under yellow floodlights. Later, we sat by a wood stove in the warming house, all alone, and after a while I asked her what it was like to be dead. Apparently, Linda thought it was a silly question. She smiled and said, Do I look dead? I told her no. She looked terrific. I waited a moment, then asked again, and Linda made a soft little sigh. I could smell her wool mittens drying on the stove. For a few seconds she was quiet. Well, right now, she said, I'm not dead. But when I am, it's like... I don't know. I guess it's like being inside a book that nobody's reading. A book? I said. An old one. It's up on the library shelf, so you're safe and everything. But the book hasn't been checked out for a long, long time. All you can do is wait. Just hope somebody will pick it up and start reading. Linda smiled at me. Anyhow, it's not so bad, she said. I mean, when you're dead, you just have to be yourself. She stood up and put on her red stocking cap. This is stupid. Let's go skate some more. So I followed her down to the frozen pond. It was late and nobody else was there, and we held hands and skated almost all night under the yellow lights. And then, it becomes 1990. I'm 43 years old and a writer now, still dreaming Linda alive in exactly the same way. She's not the embodied Linda. She's mostly made up with a new identity and a new name, like the man who never was. Her real name doesn't matter. She was nine years old. I loved her, and then she died. And yet right here, in the spell of memory and imagination, I can still see her as if through ice, as if I'm gazing into some other world, a place where there are no brain tumors and no funeral homes, where there are no bodies at all. I can see Kiowa, too, and Ted Lavender and Kurt Lemon, and sometimes I can even see Timmy skating with Linda under the yellow floodlights. I'm young and happy. I'll never die. I'm skimming across the surface of my own history, moving fast, riding the melt beneath the blades, doing loops and spins, and when I take a high leap into the dark and come down thirty years later, I realize it is as Tim, trying to save Timmy's life with a story.